So today I'm going to talk about what makes a vet's clinic tick. Now every pet owner, which I'm assuming most of us are, have been to a vet clinic at one point or another, similar to this one, for a variation of reasons. So injections, your dog got sick, whatever. But what we may not think about is what happens when our, when our pet goes behind the front desk and what's going on back there to keep things going and to make sure that our pet stays healthy. Well, it takes a lot of people to run a vet clinic. So the first thing you need to figure out is who's who around the office. Well, first of all, you have your doctors or your vets, and then the most important, of course, because they oversee or perform most of the <clears throat> procedures that go on in the clinic, and they, they're the reason that they exist. <laughs> And then you have your vet techs and nurses who are always right there with the veterinarians. They're performing basic procedures while the vets are off doing surgery and they're really a driving force in keeping things well organized around the, around the clinic and making sure that things are going smoothly. Uh, now you have your resident trainer who helps people who have recently adopted puppies to make sure that they're going to get off on a good start and that the puppy and the family are going to coexist and that they're going to live happy, healthy lives. And then you have your kennel staff, which is what I'm a part of at the vet clinic where I work. And what we're responsible for is making sure that the pets who are staying with us or are boarded are healthy and they're eating and they're drinking and they're playing and they're exercising and that they're keeping their health up while their family's out of town. Then you have your groomer who makes sure all the patients look good when they leave. Okay, so what else goes on besides all the people who run around? You have your basic procedures, which are your routine office visits, basic diagnosis, uh, colds, yearly injections, the simple things. And then you have the more complicated side, which are surgical procedures, which can range anywhere from basic spays and neuters, which take about 20, 20 minutes, to the more complicated orthopedic surgeries, which can take several hours. And then you have lab and diagnosis. And what this deals with is critically ill animals who undergo a series of scans and tests and um, to hopefully get them better. And then there are some clinics who go above and beyond and actually start their own rescue and adoption program within the clinic. They, bring in animals and prevent them from going into shelters and becoming one of those thousands that are euthanized every year. Okay, so how does this relate to all of you? Well, everybody in the clinic, from the person who mops the floors, which is me, to the doctor who performed five surgeries that day, is extremely passionate about what they do, and they really want to make a difference in the, in the lives of the animals and, and your families and your pets and in the community. And, and they need all the help they can get from the community because it takes a lot to run a vet clinic. Everything from food for the kennel, because we have to pay for that, and then the money for the new technology so that the lives of animals can be improved. So what can you do? Well, the biggest thing that any one person can do to help out local vet clinics and the animals is to spread the word and get involved. What this means is anything, fundraisers, food drives, adoption drives, any little bit helps because it helps keep the vet clinics going and ensures that they're going to be able to provide the best service that they can. So why is this important? Well, just as it's important for us as people to have doctor's offices, specialist offices, all that kind of thing that we can go to in our time of need, this is important for the animals as well, and if we don't have this, then we cannot take care of our animals and improve their lives. 